Some people think hiking in Oklahoma is just okay, but I've found that Oklahoma has many fantastic parks and trails. I'm Big Dave, the parks professor. On my April 2023 hiking trip, I visited and hiked in every state park in Northeast Oklahoma. For this video, Northeast Oklahoma is the part of the state north of I-40 and east of I-35. In this video, I'm going to rank all nine of those parks starting at number nine and ending at number one. These rankings are solely my opinion and they are based on the park's scenery, amenities, hiking options, and when applicable, historical value. Starting with number nine, we find Sequoia Bay State Park. The closest state park to Muskogee, this park occupies a nice spot on Fort Gibson Lake and it has a large and excellent campground. But there's only one short hiking trail. That trail was poorly maintained on my visit and it doesn't pass any unique scenery. Maybe this park's most unique feature is the Five Nations Monument near the park entrance, which features flags of the Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Creek, and Shawnee Nations, all of which have lands in Oklahoma. This park is a nice place to spend a couple of days, but not much more. Coming in at number eight is Cherokee Landing State Park. This park occupies a scenic peninsula in Tenkiller Lake, and it has a really nice campground. In general, camping is a real strength of Oklahoma state park system. Every state park in Oklahoma seems to have a large and well-run campground. But that's about all that's here. There is a disc golf course and some picnic areas, but they desperately need some upgrades. In the end, there aren't a lot of reasons to come here other than the lake and campground. Holding strong at number seven is Keystone State Park. The closest state park to Tulsa, this is another lakeside park. And yes, there are a lot of lakeside state parks in Oklahoma. This park is located on its namesake Keystone Lake, and it has three nice campgrounds. The park has two short nature trails, the best of which is the Ranger Trail. The Ranger Trail is a one and a half mile loop that passes some interesting rock outcrops and a fishing pond. There's nothing really unique to see here, but this park is a nice place to spend a few days. Coming in at number six is Grand Lake State Park. This was the hardest park in these rankings to rank because it actually consists of seven disjoint areas along the shore of Grand Lake of the Cherokees. Each of these areas have different amenities, but none of them have extensive hiking options. A few of them do have short nature trails or campgrounds, and all of them offer great lake access for fishing and boating. Grand Lake of the Cherokees itself is somewhat unique. It is located in the foothills of the Ozarks, so it is a deep, rocky lake, unlike some of the shallower prairie lakes in Oklahoma. So even though it doesn't rank very high under these criteria, if you want to experience Grand Lake of the Cherokees, maybe on a camping or boating trip, then this is the park for you. Moving up to number five, we find Tenkiller State Park. This is another lakeside park with a nice campground and a couple of nature trails, but it also has a couple of unique things that the previous parks don't. First, this park has some nice stone picnic shelters. Normally, you only find park architecture this nice at big famous parks and parks dating to the 1930s, so they give the park a veteran look and feel. Second, this park has a scuba diving area in Tenkiller Lake, a rarity in a landlocked state like Oklahoma. There are interesting things to see under the lake, including an airplane fuselage, a school bus, a helicopter, and the remains of old homesteads. This park also has a quality recreational disc golf course and it is far better than your average lakeside park. Coming in at number four, we find Sequoia State Park. Formerly known as Western Hills State Park, this is another park on Fort Gibson Lake like the similarly named Sequoia Bay State Park we saw earlier. Unlike its Fort Gibson sibling, this park has excellent amenities and hiking options. It has the largest state park lodge in Oklahoma, a nine-hole golf course, and 14 miles of hiking trails. Those trails lead to a rocky lakeside fossil area and to Inspiration Point, which juts out into the lake. This park also has a nature center and riding stables for bridle trail users. This park may not have any truly unique scenery, 
but it has better amenities than any park we have seen so far, thus it ranks higher. Before we enter the top 3, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this sort of video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe buttons. That helps other people find this video, and encourages me to bring more of this sort of thing your way. Growing up at number 3 is Greenleaf State Park. Dating to the 1930s, this is one of the oldest state parks in Oklahoma, and some of the park's original structures still stand. This park is located in a deep valley, and is completely surrounded by Camp Gruber, a training camp for the Oklahoma National Guard. Thus, this park feels more secluded and isolated than it really is. This park has a fantastic campground on its namesake lake, but remember that one of the criteria in these rankings is hiking options, and this park's 18-mile backpacking trail, one of the few long-distance backpacking trails in Oklahoma, is the reason this park ranks so high. I didn't hike all of the backpacking trail, but I did enjoy the part of it I did hike, and I see why people like to come here for the solitude and serenity. Cascading in at number 2 is Natural Falls State Park. Dating only to 1991, this is Oklahoma's newest state park, but it was a privately owned roadside park long before it became a state park. The park's centerpiece is its namesake waterfall, which is tied for the tallest waterfall in Oklahoma. You can get a top-down view of the waterfall from an ADA-accessible viewpoint, and a set of concrete steps take you to the postcard view at the waterfall's base. The park has several excellent other hiking trails, some easy and some steep and rocky. It also has one of the better disc golf courses in northeast Oklahoma, a course that has lots of challenging woods and elevation. I really enjoyed my time here, and this is a gem of an addition to the Oklahoma State Park System. Finally, rising up to number one, we find Osage Hills State Park. This is another park that dates to the 1930s, and it consists of land located within the Osage Reservation. One of the park's many hiking trails takes you through the Old Civilian Conservation Corps campsite, where the people who built this park lived while they were building the park. Some foundations and a water tower remain today, as do eight of the cabins that they built. The hiking trails around Lookout Lake are steeper and rockier than you might expect for Oklahoma, and the elevation makes for some of the state's best fall leaf peeping. The park also features some small but scenic waterfalls in Sand Creek. This large park offers a little of everything in terms of scenery and amenities, and that's why it is my favorite state park in Northeast Oklahoma. Well, that's it. All nine state parks in Northeast Oklahoma ranked. Love the rankings? Hate the rankings? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Big Dave, the Parks Professor for Parking Full Time. Have a great afternoon, take care, and Lord bless.